Alrighty, so we just did some practice problems with the sample mean and sampling distribution. Now let's go ahead and move on to the confidence interval. So the purpose of creating a confidence interval is to provide an estimate for a population parameter. And in this case, we're talking about the mean. Right? So we're talking about the population, and a parameter is basically the population version of anything. So for example, sample mean, its parameter would be population mean. Um, sample standard deviation, the parameter is population standard deviation. So that's basically a parameter, is just a fancy way of saying the population version of whatever we're talking about. Um, an interval is created because a sample mean has some variability. So we can't just get a sample mean and say, yes, that's the population mean. And the reason for that is because we're not really sure, right? Because at the end of the day, we could have picked a, a random sample that's not really representative or at the end of the day, you know, 36 people don't represent, for example, the United States. Does that make sense? So we have some variability in this, um, in this assumption or in this little estimate that we just got from a little sample. And so with that, that kind of variability gives us an interval for which the population mean could lie. So how far above and below this um, interval spans is known as the margin of error. So the margin of error is basically how accurate we can be. And so here we have kind of the, the equation for the margin of error. And it's a critical z. And these critical z's are tied to the upper and lower limits of this interval. And so for example, if I had the confidence level, which is this area here, the confidence level is basically the probability or the area within my interval. Um, and so I could be 90% confident, 95% confident, whatever the case may be. The more confident you are, however, the wider the interval gets. Because essentially you can't have your cake and eat it too. If you want to be more confident, that means you're going to be more confident but less accurate. Does that make sense? Or you can be less confident and more accurate. Does that make sense? So if we have like a 95% confidence level, we up it up to we bump it up to 99. 99 then includes some more observations, so it gets wider. Does that make sense? So here's our confidence level, and that's again that area in between my interval. Um, and we need to get a z that's tied to these. So the z that's tied to these actually is on either end, and it's going to be a positive and a negative one. Because basically, again, this interval is above and below this sample mean. So the midpoint is the sample mean. And then we have the sample mean plus the margin of error, and the sample mean minus the margin of error. And again, this margin of error, we need that z in order to calculate it. And also, times the standard error of the mean. Um, and so the population mean is said to be between x bar, the sample mean, plus or minus this margin of error. So basically, the population means should we can be 95% confident or whatever percent confident that the population mean lies within this interval. Does that make sense? And so let's go ahead and keep going. Let's talk about the z-critical, how to find that. So to find the z-critical, you need a probability associated with it that you can actually look up in the table. And so remember, in our table, our z-table works off of the area from 0 to z, right? So in this case here, it would be the, the yellow area that's shaded. So what is that yellow area? If they give you the confidence level, it's from the green all the way to the yellow, right? But the yellow is just half of that. So this area here is a confidence level over two. And that's what you would look up in your table in the area, in the probability section, and work your way backwards to a z-score. Does that make sense? So that's how you get the critical z. I kind of went ahead. Um, it's provided by the confidence level, and you would look up confidence level over two. So let's go ahead and do some examples. So you want to know the average time it takes for you to get to work. Over 36 trips, you find a sample average and standard deviation of one hour and 18 minutes, respectively. If you wanted to construct a 90% confidence interval for the true average driving time to work, how large would the margin of error be? So here we have, on average, I spend how much time? An hour, right? AKA 60 minutes. So here we have 60 minutes. We have a standard deviation of 18, but are we working with individual observations or a sample? We're working with a sample, right? So we need to get a standard error, which our standard error is, again, 
So standard deviation over square root n. So we get 18 over the square root of 36. So it's 18 over 6, so basically 3. So that's our standard error. We want to construct a 90% confidence interval. right? So that means from the lower to the upper end is 90%. So that's our interval there, but we're not quite done yet, right? They're asking us for the margin of error. So let's go ahead and start with that. But our margin of error, we need the, the Z critical and the standard error. We have the standard error, but we don't have the Z. So let's go ahead and find the Z first. So to get a Z critical, we need the confidence level over two, right? And again, because that corresponds to the area from zero to that critical Z value. So it's 0.90 over two. 0.45. So we looked that up in our Z table, right? So you go 0 0.4, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So I get 1736. Does that make sense? It shouldn't make sense because we're working with an area. So we need to look inside the table first and then work our way backwards to a Z score. Does that make sense? So that 0.45 is not a Z score. It's a probability associated with the z-score that we're looking for. So let's go ahead and look up for 0.45. So here we are. So 45 is somewhere in between here, right? 4,500. But it's not actually closer to one or the other. It's 4,495, which is five below, and then 4,505, which is five above. So what we do then is kind of get the midpoint between those two, right? So let's go ahead and look at the z-scores that are tied to those two probabilities and get a midpoint. So basically, this is 1.64. This is 1.65. So this guy here in the middle would be 1.6. And it's halfway right. So 1.645. Does that make sense? And all you really do for these is just get the average. So 1.64 plus 1.65 divided by 2 is 1.645. Cool? So either way you want to do it, you can get the average or just say, okay, the, in between 1.64 and 1.65 is 1.645. So that's our Z. Critical. Awesome. And now, our margin of error is that z times the standard error. So we get 1.645 times 3. And that gives us 4.935. So that's basically how far above and below 60 we would go to get our full interval. Cool? So now let's go and try another one. So you take into account how much time it takes to find parking as well as to get to your job now. And you find an average of an hour and 22 minutes with a standard deviation of 15 minutes. Assume this information was based on a sample of 100 trips to work. Construct a 99% confidence interval. So, again, we're back to, we have an average, right? What's that average? An hour and 22 turns into 82 minutes. So we have an average of 82 minutes. And are we working with a sample or individual observations? We're working with the sample again, right? So we need to get a standard error for the sampling distribution. So the standard error is a standard deviation of 15 over the square root of 100. So that means we have a standard error of 1.5. Cool? And then trying to create a 99% confidence interval. So that means here's 99% of observations. That makes sense? And now, our next step is to get the margin of error. But before, just like we saw earlier, we need to get the critical Z first, right? So critical Z is based off of this area here, which is the confidence level over two again. So we get 0.495, right? So we're gonna look that up in our table and find a Z score tied to 0.495. So let's go ahead and look.
So 0.495 is between 2.57 and 2.58, right? So what do we do again if it's in between? And it's exactly in between because 49.49 40, is one below, right? And then 49.51 is one above. Because at the end of the day, we're trying to look for 49.50. So we get the average of these two, and we end up with still the midpoint is 2.575. Cool? So that's our Z tied to that confidence interval. So next step, let's get our margin of error. So the margin of error is the Z critical times it's 2.575 times the standard error of 1.5. So we get a margin of error of 3.8625. And now we have a margin of error, and now all we have to do is basically the mean plus that margin of error and the mean minus that margin of error, aka x bar plus or minus margin of error. So we get 82 plus or minus 3.8625. So we do some cute little math and we end up getting 78.1375 and 85.8625. And that's about it for confidence intervals. So and again, this is for a large sample. So next we're going to see with a small sample, what do we do? Uh, and that means a sample size less than 30, where we don't have the population standard deviation. So until then, though, let's do some practice problems to make sure we got confidence intervals down, and then we'll move on to the next concept.